Hi, I'm Kat Garber, and this is the story of my life. Um, I got saved at a very early age. I remember praying and asking Jesus to come live in my heart and forgive me of my sins um, when I was around five or six, growing up at the church that my grandparents went to at the lake in Baden, North Carolina. And I remember it was something that I know I did and know I accepted, but for a while, um, it didn't really have a big impact on my life. I mean, granted, when you're young, you're not really, you know, committing any of the quote-unquote big sins or whatever, but uh, it wasn't really until high school that I kind of started realizing that it was supposed to have a greater impact on my life, that it was not supposed to just be, you know, I don't want to get caught, I don't want to get in trouble for doing bad things, but I want to try to live a life um, that glorifies God in all that I do, that's... Uh, pleasing to him, not for fear of punishment, but for seeking to be more like him and to be more of an example to Jesus, of Jesus to the people around me. And so I went to college at Furman University and earned a religion degree, and that was very challenging at times. It, I learned a lot of things and was being taught a lot of things, some that I agreed with and some that I didn't, uh, some things that went against everything I'd grown up in the church believing and, and thinking to be true. And so for me, it was a good opportunity um, to kind of dive back into the scriptures and figure out why I believe these things. Um, for some people, they just got very frustrated and annoyed with what the teachers were saying, what the professors were teaching, and just kind of shut them down and blocked them out completely. But, you know, I saw it as an opportunity that I knew the Bible to be true and to look more at why I believe the things I believed and not just, you know, because that's what I've been taught all my life or that's what I've grown up um, thinking or, you know, I've had somebody tell me that. And so for me, college was challenging at times, but a, a really good opportunity for me to understand more and to kind of firm up that foundation um, of my relationship with God and what I believed his word to be saying to me. Uh, after college, I went to New Orleans for seminary which if you had asked me my freshman or sophomore year at Furman if I was going to seminary, I would have told you, heck no, I'm graduating with a four-year degree, and then I'm going to go find a job and be done with this whole school thing. Uh, God clearly had other plans. Uh, in fact, such different plans that I moved down to New Orleans, and then two weeks later evacuated back to South Carolina for um, Hurricane Katrina. And that was a really tough time. Uh, it had taken me a really long time to want to go to New Orleans. Uh, there's a really nice seminary called Southeastern that's in North Carolina, and it was about an hour away from where my parents were. It was about three or four hours away from people that I knew in South Carolina, and I'm headed to New Orleans where I don't know anyone, and it's 13 hours from home. So uh, that summer before I left, uh, it was my first summer on Sea Salt and staff, and it was just a really challenging summer between me and God of trying to figure out, you know, I know this is where you've called me, but I don't want to go. Is there any other option? Can we find another plan here? And me finally recognizing that I needed to be obedient um, to that call that he had placed on my life. And so I went, and then I evacuated, and then I had a few words with God of, really? Like, I finally was willing to go. I wasn't super excited about it, but I was going to be obedient, and now you've placed me back in South Carolina. That's not how this was supposed to work, God. Um, this wasn't my plan. This wasn't what I wanted to have happen here, and he kind of, you know, through that taught me, you know, that even though it's not always, things aren't always going to follow my plan, and I can try really hard to plan things out, but it's not always going to um, happen because God has a better plan that I usually can't see or can't understand until after it's already happened. And it's just a matter of trusting in him um, and knowing that he's got my best interest at heart. Um, you know, that he's promised me that abundant life and he's not going to take me to a place that he's not uh, going to be there to protect me and he's not going to be there uh, to watch me and carry me through that. And so went back after spending a year in South Carolina, went back that following August finished my master's degree, um, graduated this past May, and found myself once again in a moment of, hey, God, remember those plans that we had that I was going to stay in New Orleans and find a job down there, and it was going to be really good and great. Um, 
yeah, what's happening with that? Uh, jobs weren't really panning out in New Orleans. Fortunately, I got a call um, from Mr. Bill Cox about three or four weeks before graduation, and he offered me a position at Sea Salt again, and I got to come back this past summer, which was really um, a huge blessing. I, again, didn't think I was going to be at Sea Salt this past summer, and it was really interesting to see that that was exactly where he needed me to be, even though, once again, it wasn't um, in my plans and it wasn't in the schedule that I had laid out. And so, went to Sea Salt this summer, uh, met some really awesome people, got to reconnect with some former staff members, um, and just had a really great time. At some point, uh, Kaylin was like, oh, you went to seminary at New Orleans. You must know Nathan Klein. And I was like, yeah, we, we went to seminary together and did a ministry called Him and I Together. And Kaylin just kept going on and on and on about how awesome Nathan was and how great he was. And so I touched base with him and was like, just wanted to let you know that Kaylin won't shut up about how awesome you are. And Nathan was like, well, I guess he told you what we're doing, right? I said, no, uh, living in Anderson, South Carolina, waiting for your baby to be born. And he was like, well, that, and you should go ahead and start praying about the church plant that we've got um, going that we're going to be doing. And so let's talk to some more to Kaylin, talk some more to Nathan, started praying through that process and realized um, that that was where God was leading me to go. So we finished Sea Salt this summer. I moved to Anderson, South Carolina with no job and with a place to live that I had found on Craigslist. And, you know, again, if you had asked me a year ago, six months ago, if this is what I would have been doing, it's not at all what I had planned. Um, but it's really exciting to see how God has brought all these pieces into place. Uh, I'm super, super excited about going to Winston-Salem um, and just loving on the college students there the young adults, the young families, um, there's such a need there. Uh, there's a lot of churches that are in the area, and they're doing a great job, but with the population that's there, um, there's a need for even more churches. And so we're going to start a church called Revo, and we're just really excited about the opportunity that God has called us to, uh, to minister to the people of Winston-Salem. And so I think kind of one of the big lessons that God's been teaching me is that even though I try to come up with all these good plans and have, you know, four different calendars that are all synced up and here's what we're going to do and step by step, that he's not always going to reveal the details to me until I get to that place um, that he's calling me and he's leading me to step by step. And it was really interesting. Uh, even this morning I was reading in Acts and it was uh, kind of recapping Paul's Damascus Road experience. And God tells him, go to Damascus and I'll tell you what you're supposed to do when, once you get there. Um, and Paul kind of took that step of faith and started um, this whole revolution, this huge movement um, in the history of Christianity. And I just, I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful for that example. Um, and I'm so, I don't know, uh, <laughs> amazed to see that kind of taking place in my life, that I don't know exactly what the future holds. I don't have this whole plan um, laid out step by step, but I know that God's with me, and I know that as long as I take that next step that he's revealed to me, that he's going to show me where to go from there. And so I would just encourage y'all uh, to continue to seek his face, to know that he's got a plan for you, um, to know that he loves you and desires to have a relationship with you, and that's um, why he sent um, Jesus to come live, to give us that example to follow, um, and to be that ultimate sacrifice, and he didn't do that um, just to leave us hanging with no idea of where to go next. And so I just encourage you to follow him step by step and see where he takes you and know that it's going to be an incredible and amazing journey, and even if it's not what you had planned, it's always going to turn out better. Um, so hope this was encouraging. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.